guys. So I'm glad we're all here tonight. Um, so uh, I'd like to start the conversation off um, with the question on the screen, which is how to work collaboratively within groups where the cumulative social skills aren't particularly well developed. Um, examples of this are when people are dominating or uh, abdicating the conversation. Um, and Jeff, I would uh, like you to maybe start the conversation off if you could. It's a pretty interesting conversation, and it's kind of age old. You know, we've been ever since I started in education. We talked about the idea of cooperative learning was a kind of a big watchword then, and we were given opportunities to try to learn how to do cooperative learning. And and one of the things that uh, I often did um, came from a company I worked for in California called Creative Learning Systems, where we had a game that the kids played at the beginning of the year, and um, I sat down with them. And we had a good time, and we would give them basically a set of cards. And we'd deal it out to them, and there'd be roles in there, like uh, the person who's a recorder, person who is a questioner, person who's a clarifier, and so on, around the, around the different groups. That would be given their role to play, and, and they would know what that person did. In the, on the card, it would describe what that person did. So they would have that sitting to the side. Um, and we'd go ahead and have a discussion. You know, anything would be thrown out there, you know, something to do with the topic. It was usually history for me, because that's what I often was teaching. And there'd be a historical event that we'd have a conversation about. And the people would go about solving the problem together, but most importantly, importantly, keeping track of what it was that they did inside their role. So it was always a good piece to get them to even think there were other roles. You know, then everybody had to be active in the conversation. And then after that, we had a little deal where we'd play a little game with them where we'd establish just a piece of paper between two individuals. Um, one person would be given a kind of intricate drawing, and uh, he or she would be able to tell the person on the other side of the piece of the paper what to draw. So, you know, take your right hand and, you know, draw a big circle and, you know, put a little head on one end. Oh, that should be a little squarer. You know, and they would try to describe it specifically. The person would have to go ahead and do it without being able to ask any questions. So the person doing the drawing couldn't ask any questions. They could only do as they were told. And then afterwards, kind of a debrief would happen um, where we'd talk in the class and uh, discuss, you know, what were the difficulties? How come it was so hard to draw this thing? Well, they obviously would come up, but we couldn't talk about it. Well, let's go ahead and try it again with some communication involved. And they'd draw it and would obviously, almost 90% of the time or more, come out to look more like what it was supposed to when they could communicate. So then we would debrief the roles and debrief the need for communication inside of a, of, a, of a team in order for it to be effective. And that was a launch point that we could always come back to as touchstones for the rest of the semester. Okay, one of the things that's happening within that the, those scenarios that you're describing, Jeff, is that I think um, the, the roles that the individuals are taking within the, the group um, are sort of defining their the the value that they can uh, have in, in terms of relationship to um, the final product. So I was the clarifier in this particular group, and therefore all of the clarification of the final product was due to me. Or um, you know, if I was not the creative person, then I can't claim any of that creativity, etc. What I'm getting to is the the whole differentiation between cooperation, which is what I see as the root of both of those activities that you were describing, and where I would prefer people in this particular course and, and indeed the rest of the program to move to that that whole idea of collaboration. So it's an idea of re. Um, valuing the roles that people are playing, but not being stuck in those roles. So the roles actually shift from person to person to person within the group so that you get to the point where everybody can claim ownership to the final product or to the final process that's being used because you have all contributed to it um, in equal fashion, or there's some kind of equality. I'm not going to say that the same number of words are going to be used by exactly the, each individual who's in the group or anything. But you have to get to the point where you're actually able to express yourself. You need to be heard by the others. 
and you need to listen to the others. So through that process of, of exchanging an idea and incorporating it into your own thought structure, etc., requires that you cannot dominate, nor can you abdicate. You have to be part of the process at all times, which means also that you have to be present when the decisions are being made. Um, so you need to make use of the technology in this particular program anyways to, that would allow you to contribute uh, most effectively to the actual process that's going along. Um, either one of you want to comment on where I took that? Uh, no, I think I just to add on to that, just the fact uh, when you talked about valuing the different roles and just remembering we all have strengths and that the uh, the end product, the collaboration should be a collaboration of our strengths and you need to remember that each of our strengths are different and that we each can um, apply those to different areas and you know in the end result um, you get a great product when it's um, a representation of everyone's strengths as opposed to you know this is my area that's your area um, so the building on difference between the cooperation and the collaboration.